Ah, Charlie, we're always banging on. Banging on about great makeovers on how to improve your home and your lifestyle. Yeah, well, you're going to love this one, because after watching, you're going to be able to build a deck, pave a courtyard, and design a garden from scratch. Sounds pretty good to me. This is it. This is where it's all going to be happening. Yeah, it's a <laughs> tiny, daggy, 70... Sh hey, guys. Hey. How are you going? Oh, nice, hey. Alex. Coming down. Yeah. This is it, your humble abode. Yeah, yeah, as you can see, there's a bit of room for improvement. <laughs> How long have you guys had this place? We have it. We bought it for a year, and we purchased it off my grandmother. We were unsuccessful at a few auctions, and then this turned up, um, so it was a great find. It's a beautiful story. Yeah. And have you had a think about plans on what you want to do around here? Yeah, we we did have some plans. We've obviously done the inside first, and kind of neglected the outside. I can um, see that. Yeah. But we just <laughs> want to be able to use the outside at the okay. moment. Great. And so, have you had a bit of a think of what you'd like to do out here? Uh, we'd love an entertaining space at the yeah. moment. You know. We can't really entertain on a slope, so our lunch is kind of tipping when people come over, which isn't ideal. Is there any restrictions on the place? Yeah, so we've got a uh, strata manager that looks after this complex. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had to kind of uh, get his approval before going ahead with a few things, but we've kind of sent him all the plans and he's uh, given us the green light, so... That's what we like to hear. Yeah, definitely. So, Bryce, tell me, what do you like on the tools, mate? I'm not great. Look, I sit at a desk all day, so I'm keen to learn if you're willing to teach. That's a done deal, mate. You teach me how to type, I'll we'll teach you how to use yeah. a tool. <laughs> you type with just your thumbs, though, don't you? No, my head. <laughs> 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 you know, like those birdies. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, guys? Enough fun? We'll get started? Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. We'll take the heavy ones. <laughs> When it comes to moving plants, you don't really want to be doing it in the heat of summer, but sometimes your hand's just forced. So I recommend you do it early in the morning and make sure you give your plants a really good drink the day before. That keeps them hydrated. Then the hard work begins where you've just got to go around and dig as much of a root ball out as you possibly can. You're going to sort of dig a trench around the outside of the plant and then try and get underneath, keeping as many roots as possible. Once it's finally out the ground, you need to pot it up as quickly as you can and make sure you keep it really well hydrated. Looks like this one's ready. Yeah, mate. Cool. Good way. Mamma mia, that's beautiful. Look at that for a ball. So what we have here, this one's called an azalea, and what you want to do with these is you want to make sure that you set them up in the right position of your yard. To find out where that is, we'll call Charlie in. Charlie! <laughs> what are you doing? I just, um, I pulled out an azalea. Is that an azalea? Yeah. Oh, I told you it was. Just wondering how you managed to do it. <clears throat> these things are painted on, mate. Well done, Josh. <laughs> Josh, well done on digging that azalea out. <laughs> The clear out is done. It's looking better already. Does oh, look good, doesn't it? What's your plans, mate? Look, it's not the biggest space in the world, is it? I mean, it feels a lot bigger now we've cleared it out, but... Yeah. So I want to create some zones so they've got some destinations to go to. If you can build me a deck here. Or maybe a, an archway between the two. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll do some paving down there. Some terracing in between. To separate it, ah, you know, for those special moments where I've missed you. Oh, this is it. Seven months of separation, and this is what happens. You and them, we can do it now. That's all it takes to save any marriage. I do, Charlie. I do, and for that, I'll build you a deck. I mean, absence <laughs> does make the heart grow fonder. Charlie just proposed to me before. Oh, what did you <laughs> say? Well, I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bryce. The way this works for the deck is we need to create our support. So you saw how hard it was to take that concrete step mm. out. So we're utilising the rest of this concrete. The only reason we had to move that is we wanted to get our height yep. down. So on this concrete, we're just using some post supports. And basically, they're going to get diner bolted down. So we've laid these out. We've got our diner bolts here. We've put a washer in. That sure. way, it covers the hole more. But what you want to do, you just want to pull the thread up. That way, this doesn't spread when you knock it in the hole. Yep. You're going to set it inside the hole, use your hammer, hit it down, do it up with the ratchet. If you can do that, mate, 
That means I can keep drilling the hole. Sounds good? Sounds easy to me. Awesome. If I can do it, anyone can do it. That's what I always say. Happy? Yep. No, you're not touching to the bottom. So you've got to make sure it's touching all the way. All right, Bryce. So for the perimeter ones, mate, we're going to be uh, conquering these ones in. So I'll add the water. I'll put the concrete in, and you mix it as I'm pouring. The trick here is you want to get some concrete under the paste, otherwise the paste is just supporting on dirt. Okay. So as I'm pouring, once you've mixed it up a bit, I'll just lift this paste up to make sure we get some underneath. Easy. Beautiful. Nice. All right, that's it, Bish. Well, I think we deserve a coffee or something. All right, let's go, Bryce. Oh, okay. Now the stumps are in, we can start working on getting these bearers in. Beautiful. So the way a sub four works, Bryce, is we've got our stumps. Now we're adding our bearers. And the bearers connect to the stumps. And then we're going to sit our joists on top of that. And the joists are going to support the decking boards that then go on top. OK. All right, so after these bearers, you start on the joist, which means we're that bit closer to getting the boards on. Excellent. That is exciting. Indeed, the frame is looking good. Fantastic, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, it's very exciting. And so this means we're bringing, getting ready to bring the papers in. Yep. I'll Once these back. decking boards go down. Yes, well done. Yeah, keep going. I reckon What's it's next? just. I, well, I don't know what comes next. <laughs> I'm just excited to see how these decking boards look <laughs> against these pavements. When it comes to updating our fences, I'm just using paint. Now, I do really like a dark colour on a fence because it makes plants look good. But if I was to do that in this garden, combined with the red brick, it would just sap out too much light. And I can't change the red brick because of strata restrictions. So I'm using this colour. It's called Miller Mood. It's nice and light. It's going to reflect light around, which is going to make the space feel bigger. But it's also a nice backdrop for our plants. Hello, how you doing? You trying to call me now? It used to be something that you ain't my woman. The hell is you talking about? The framing's complete and we're on to the exciting part, laying the decking boards. And for that, we're going for this beautiful black butt timber. To start, I've just measured in the width of a board and I've chalked a line. And that's what I'm going to work to first, I'm using this smart bit. I'll pre-drill my holes and it countersinks it at the same time. Then I'll screw that off. Once this line's done, I'll then just repeat the process for the rest of the deck. When you're working with these beautiful wide boards, you want to remember every fourth board to re-chalk a line. That way, you know you're staying nice and straight and parallel. The other thing is, unfortunately, you can't get black butt in these long lengths. So you are going to have joints, but the trick is you need to make sure that you stagger them, never keep them in a straight line. You'll also notice that we're overhanging our decking boards. That way, at the end, we'll chalk a line and do a nice straight saw cut. To create a separate zone to the deck, I'm using a different surface down the bottom of the yard. And these are the pavers I'm going to be using. They're a relatively inexpensive concrete paver, which means they're going to be hard wearing, and the colour is perfect for our colour scheme. We've got our timber with our arch, we've got some trims and the fence colour, and you can see the combination just works really well. It's really tempting in a small area to try and get your hard stand as big as possible, but that actually makes it feel smaller and really uninviting. We've got two areas. We've got the flat deck and this flat bit of paving, but joining them up, we've got these two platforms that cross over. Now, the idea behind that is it slows you down as you walk through the space, which makes it feel bigger. We've also got some really ginormous garden beds here, which you'll be able to get loads of plants in. Bryce, are you happy with the progress? Yeah, it's looking great. It's really coming together now. Well, I'll take credit for that. If you said otherwise, um, you know, I would have said talk to Charlie. What are we doing now, Charlie? What's this all about? The arbor? Just abuse me and then <laughs> advice. Um, 
Yeah, it's we're having an arbor that's going to come up and into the house. Yeah, and so the purpose of this arbor, I'm a bit confused. No reason. So just because no <laughs> extra work, <laughs> extra work. Yeah, look, we're going to bring the architecture out into the garden so it feels kind of more integrated yep. and it's going to give you a nice spot to sit beneath and then you can get some climbers to get some plants over. So you're adding vertical height. Yeah, Cool. Awesome. So we're not actually battening this arbor out. It'll just no, be these posts up. coming up yeah. and then the plants will do the work for us. Exactly right. I like that. Let's do it. A good tip when you're working with the structure that is going up in the air is to paint everything first. And that's exactly what we've done. I'm just using some 90 by 90 treated pine. And to hold these posts in place, I've got some stirrups that are on the concrete. And then we're using the frame of this step to give it some extra strength. And on the house, we've just got a whaling plate. Once it's all up to strengthen it and keep it all together, we'll be adding some brackets. Yeah? You could not get any plumber. Love it! Oh, Charlie, you're cooking me a barbie. Uh, well, I've got a first world problem for you, What's actually. That? How do you cover an air conditioning unit? Ah, well, we've come up with the solution. Mm. I've just made a simple ladder frame, painted it black, yep. cladded one side with this beautiful black butt decking. Mm -hmm. That's going to go on this side, and it's actually going to end up being a waterfall end because we're going to have a bench going across here, which will be held up by these galvanised brackets. But. Mm. One thing you do have to know when it comes to these air conditioning outside units is you cannot cover it up. So we are keeping it open. The air's going to be blowing from here. If you cover it up, well, yeah. it could blow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so don't do that. So definitely don't do so that. So we're going to have a servery effect. So when you come out with your meat and all the stuff you're going to barbecue, you can put it there, use the barbecue. Yeah. Good use of space. And for such a small area, that's what it is, just utilising every bit of space you have. Perfect. Now, are you going to stay and cook me a barbecue, or do you have anything else to do? Uh, no, I'm going to put some wires on a fence. Yeah, yeah, and good. I'll come back for the barbecue. <laughs> 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 We're calling this servery a cheat's way of getting a polished concrete look. We've just used some FC sheet and we're finishing it off with this natural sealer. Oh, I think it's going to come up an absolute treat and it's a lot easier to make. Because I wanted to put a lounge down in this part of the garden, so we've got dining and lounge, I had to make this paving area quite large. The problem with that is it's given us these narrow garden beds, but I really want greenery and interest on them. And so I found this. This is a pack, it's 10 bucks. It consists of these stainless steel eyelets, which just go into holes, and then there's five meters of wire, which we run through. And we're going for a diamond pattern. One, because it looks nice. It's a totally different feel to the top garden, but it also shows off the fence color, so it's never going to feel too overgrown. Look at that, the perfect fit, Charlie. I am liking it. What I really like is this detail you've put into the end. So it's still nice and simple, all square cuts, but we're just staggering the end grains. Looks it's fantastic. Nice. Yeah, it looks good. It's a great little spot to come and sit now. It makes it more than just a step. Yeah. You know, yeah. And just an arch. Kind of gives it purpose to this harbour. It does. Because, you know, we're not really going to get married. No. <laughs> Sorry to break up with you now, but, you know, it's... it's, it's that's a bit brutal, isn't it? He just comes out and says that now, after I've made your seat for you, I've made your arbour, and now you just tell me you're not going to marry me anymore. That's the quickest <laughs> marriage I've ever had. <laughs> Looks like I'm coming back to you, darling. And to hold it in place, we're just going to be using four bugles going to be tied straight into the uprights. All right, darling, do you want to screw it off, or am I going to do it? Well, now we're divorced, we've got nothing. Unbelievable. Now, you might remember I said I wanted some really large garden beds around our steps. And the eagle eye viewer will notice there was concrete there, and you can't plant in concrete. So we removed it, and I'm putting in some really good quality soil. We'll mix that through what was beneath the concrete. It'll give it a new lease of life, and the plants will thrive. As you know, it's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah? Just a bit. Just a little bit hot. So we need something that can cope with that. I'm using this star jasmine, so it's a, a nice evergreen climber. It's also got a white flower, fragrant flower, which is a nice nod back to the rose that was once here. And you're literally just going to tie it onto the wires, just wind it round and round. You can tie it on if you're using small plants, but they're long enough really to hold themselves on there. Then all you need to do is just keep it to that shape. You can trim it with shears or secateurs and pretty good. Sounds amazing. Do you want to have a go at one? Hey. <laughs> Just let it go. You're gonna get there anyway. So, baby. Oh, oh, oh. Just let it go. 
good tip for small spaces is to go big with your planting. And I've done it along the deck with these great water guns. Now, this is a variety called Luscious. It's a real designer plant. It's got lovely green leaves. It's got a white trunk and black stems. So it looks fantastic against our painted fence. I'm really happy with the planting that's going into our wide, deep garden beds. I've started it off with this Pittosporum. Now, this is called Ivory Sheen. You may think by putting a hedge in, it segregates the garden up, but actually, it slows you down. You take the planting in, and it makes the space feel bigger. On the lower levels, one of my favorites. This is Raphaelepsis Oriental Pearl. This has a natural sort of bun shape, so you're not going to have to clip it, and it's going to form a lovely cloud. We've got Westringer, which is a native. We'll keep that tightly clipped. And then to soften all of this, some nice grasses. For the lower part of the garden, I'm adding a bit of color using salvias. Now, I really like salvias. I've gone for a combination of this dark blue and this one, which is a Sally Fun bicolor. The thing I like about these two is they only get to about 30 centimeters, maybe 45 centimeters, so they're never going to overtake the star jasmine, like, say, a leucanthor or a black and blue wood. We're planting them all the way around the outside, and then I'm dotting a few through our larger garden beds just to tie the two together. Most of these plants are really quite drought tolerant once they're established, but it's a good idea to apply a layer of mulch. Now, I've just got Drought Master. It's got quite a bit of compost in it as well, which is going to help to feed them over time. About 75 millimeters, it's perfect depth. Left, right, uh, center. I don't know, you tell me. Where are we looking? about the styling, isn't it? Uh, that it is. And this is looking complete. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful, mate. I'm feeling so much more level. Yeah, but it doesn't matter what we think, does it? Well, yeah, it's that's up to Bryce and Alex. Should we get them? Let's do it, mate. Don't trip up. Hey, come on out, guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, is wow. This, my this looks amazing. What? <laughs> Incredible. Like You've done so much I love in such it. a short time frame. Oh, that's a, oh, well, you helped out, mate. Yeah, well, that's true. Out yes, that's it. It's amazing to think it's the same space, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah it just sure. feels so much bigger out here. Yeah, before it was a slab of concrete, and now, actually, it feels like I've got two backyards. Yeah. Well, I, I still want someone to pinch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> OK, that's good. <laughs> so you've got a really nice, big uh, dining area out here. You've got a spot to sit in the middle, and then you've got more entertaining down there. It feels like a really big garden and lots of planting as well. It's yeah. unreal. And isn't it amazing that the, the concrete space is obviously less than it used to be here, and the gardens are bigger, but it just feels so much more open. Yeah. No more entertaining on a slope. Like, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't blame the wine anymore for no. falling out. <laughs> like, I think because the house is quite small, yeah. um, so having our family and friends at the back, it's just going to be amazing. Yeah, beautiful. We'll enjoy, guys. We absolutely will. Yeah, thank you again. Thank so you much. so much. Pleasure.